Hey all, Nicholas DiMario of SterlingKisses.com here. Today, we'll be working with a castable resin by Soriatech called True Blue. They reached out to me wondering if I'd like to try it out and share my thoughts with y'all, so let's get into it. True Blue is a castable resin that contains wax and is designed with easy castability in mind. As with all castable resins that contain wax, this resin has a minimum recommended printing temperature, so a warm climate or a heated chamber for your 3D printer is advisable. It's summer here and in the mid-90s, so keeping this resin warm won't be a problem for me. As directed, the resin is shaken well and poured into the vat. And wow, is this stuff blue! It's already living up to its name, but let's see if it lives up to expectations. I've prepared a selection of my usual pieces, as well as something special to really put the resin through its paces. These pieces are being printed on an Elegoo Saturn III Ultra. Here's a look at my Chidubot settings. I'm pleased to say that during my testing I had zero print failures. I also have to say that this is the most appealing looking castable resin I've ever worked with. I still can't get over this vibrant blue color. It's very easy to read, making details stand out nicely. Removing the prints from the build plate was very easy. They adhered perfectly and peeled away nicely. You could tell they have a strong contact with the plate, but not so strong that you have to be forceful when removing them. Soriatech recommends a very gentle approach when it comes to post-processing your prints. They go as far as suggesting that a wash and cure station should be avoided for cleaning. Instead, a brush soaked in 95% alcohol should be used to remove any excess resin. I spray mine with alcohol to help with cleaning. I found that processing all my prints by hand was too time consuming, and I reached out to Soraya Tech for any insight on why a standard wash station shouldn't be used. The response was that typical all-in-one wash and cure stations could overwash the prints, which could compromise their castability. Washing by hand might be fine for three or four prints, but I'm usually processing many more prints than that at a time. So, I decided to split my tests into two batches. One washed by hand, the other done by machine. If overwashing is the concern, I'll simply end the wash cycle early. These prints went through a dirty wash and a clean wash, each time for 1 minute and 30 seconds. Compressed air was used on both groups to fully dry the prints. I'll say now that ultimately I noticed no difference in casting quality between the two groups. The only downside I found to using a wash station was some minor scuffing. As some of the pieces dried, there were bands of discoloration, but these disappeared after curing. They were cured for the shortest amount of recommended time, five minutes on one side, then flipped and cured for another five minutes. Some sweating occurred on the prints, which is not uncommon with castable resin, but I found it more difficult to deal with. Usually a quick rinse in alcohol solves the problem, but doing so with True Blue only made it worse. I ended up rinsing the prints underwater and using an air compressor to dry them. Now that the pieces are cleaned and cured, here's a look at that special something I had in mind. This is Excalibur being held by the Lady of the Lake. The piece is on the larger side with engraved details, a challenging test for any resin. The pieces are now prepared for casting by attaching them to a sprue tree. I had some difficulty getting the wax to stick sometimes. Even using sticky wax, or white wax as it's called, would not stick well enough without sanding the surface first. With the sprue tree complete, they are placed in a flask for investing. I'll be following my usual burnout schedule, which typically runs from 8 to 12 hours, depending on the size of the flask. Investment was mixed as usual at a 38 to 100 water powder ratio. It was then degassed and poured into the flasks and left to dry for roughly 8 to 10 hours. 
I usually invest at night and let the flasks set overnight so they're ready to be placed in the kiln the next morning. These pieces are being cast in sterling silver with a metal temperature of 1760 degrees Fahrenheit and a flask temperature of 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. After pouring, I wait about 8 minutes before quenching. Usually I don't throw them in there, but that one got away from me. And here they are straight out of the flask. Everything cast beautifully. True blue burnt out very clean, and I'm very pleased with how they came out. The pieces are cut free, tumbled, and go through the usual cleanup process. The lettering on Excalibur came out particularly well. A post is spot welded to the bottom of this arm for the Excalibur piece. Some gold plated details and black enamel was also applied. The piece is submerged in an electro cleaner before a pen plating technique is used to apply the gold. The inspiration for it came from this geode. It looked like water to me, and I could imagine something rising from its surface. A hole is drilled into the geode using a diamond-coated bit. The piece is then epoxied into place. Soriatek's True Blue has many great features such as excellent color, printability, and castability. There are some inconveniences to overcome such as the particular cleaning cycle and getting wax to stick well for sprueing. However, its greatest strength may be its price point. Because of its affordability, I would say it's an excellent entry-level castable resin for hobbyists or even for light production. Hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm Nicholas DeMario of SterlingKisses.com. Thanks for watching.